This is Dave with MDWK9. One of the most common misconceptions and stories propagated by certain groups is that using an e-collar prong choke on a nervous or fearful dog will make them worse at best and ruin them completely at worst. I am a positive trainer. I use motivational techniques. I do not provide punishment. I provide limitations, communication with reinforcement. Do I believe when you are using these other tools, it will make the problem worse and or completely ruin the dog? Yes and no. If you use these tools correctly, absolutely not. Do I believe that you necessarily need to use the tools? I absolutely do not. I have trained quite a few dogs personally and I have taught in quite a few people individually on how to teach their dog. A lot of the times punishment is the easy way out. If you don't know how to use a certain tool, you can most definitely ruin your dog. Or you can make the problems worse. Because this is talking about Shocking, pronging, and choking in fearful dogs. Where did the fear come from? What is it afraid of? It's a, a very general term, and it's hard to uh, classify if it's okay if you shock or prong the dog during the situations. Like I've said before, there are four phases of training. There's a puppy imprinting, there's a foundation, there is the proofing, and there is a polishing. If you are a trainer and you decide to use corrections, I believe the only time a correction should be used is during the fourth and final stage. And it's not an easy road to get to that stage. Now, if you don't have a puppy, or you imprinted the puppy poorly, you should always go back to the foundation. Foundational training for each issue. I'm not saying one issue will take you six months and then it will run consecutively. You could group issues together and you could knock out a good chunk of problems in six months. But generally speaking, foundational training takes six months. And that is if you already know what you're doing, you know how to reward the dog, and you have impeccable timing. Which learning your dog and understanding the timing can actually take a lot longer. And then proofing is when you start adding more and more distractions. When your dog generally is afraid of something and you are trying to build confidence, you lack, the dog lacks confidence in the home. It's not a very confident dog. It's a dog that will give you those oh shit eyes. Its tail will wag very lowly. It will kind of cower it will show and exhibit these signs of fear inside the home and not just outside. To build confidence, you need to address the dog, not necessarily, I believe, the fear. You want to ignore the fear. Ignoring the fear is what's going to be the difference between being able to rid it of its fear if it is capable. Proofing is when you start taking the dog outside of your home and outside of its comfort zone. Now I'm not saying keep your dog secluded within your four walls while you are working on the foundation. 
depending on what your dog's issues are, I try to avoid and I try to redirect with more motivation and things that the dog generally finds more interesting or can be easily distracted away from whatever it's scared of. If your dog is scared of people or other dogs or even if it reacts to people or other dogs, I wouldn't walk it during the time that everybody else walks their dog. Usually that's between 5 to 7 p.m. at night. During the weekends, it's about 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning. But I walk the dogs that have these issues that we're trying to avoid during off-hour times. The reason why, if they never get rewarded or their fear is not reinforced, then they have no need to fear. And like I said, I do motivational training. I work in drives, whether it be a house dog or a competition dog. Now for the house dogs, I'm not looking for the same intensity as I'm looking for the dogs. But I still like to work and drive. Maybe it's because I got told by my mentor, pick a method, stick with it. So I chose to. And that's what I'm choosing to uh, teach you guys. It's uh, different than clicker training. You don't need that bridge. Speaking of clickers, I don't know why I have one right here, but I have one right here. Yes, it may sound the same every time, but generally you can get the tone of voice with practice the same every time. Good. 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 No one ever said dog training is easy. Nobody ever said that you're going to be able to get it overnight. Decent trainers even using tools that cause pain understand, at least like I said, the decent ones understand that you can create a problem very easily if you use the tool incorrectly. Even using a positive based method, you can create more problems if you use it incorrectly. And this is where it's been so hard on my mind to even debate, and I've lost a lot of motivation over the years of trying to educate people on this method. Mainly, the reason why I've lost motivation is because when I walk into their house, they want me to punish the dog for something that they have taught it. But since I am purely positive, I know... There's a fine line, how can you always be purely positive? But generally speaking, I do not correct bad behaviors. I don't correct the dog. So, but you do not necessarily have to bring pain nor discomfort to your dog to teach it. And that's my biggest point that I am fighting for. That I am trying to educate you guys about. You do not have to hurt the dog. Speaking of that, it, when the trainers move too quickly upon first being introduced to the dog, that bothers me quite a bit because if you think about the psycho just psychology in general, if you think about this. A stranger approaches the dog, a stranger grabs the leash, starts strangling the dog, grabs the scruff, rolls it over. That's an impression that the dog receives from a stranger. So just think, the next stranger that approaches the dog, if it already had an issue and if it wasn't that big of an issue, it may get worse now because of that. That's uh, the biggest thing that I see that's wrong with a lot of the um, 
balanced slash adverse type of trainers, the traditional type of trainers. You know, and I think that's where a lot of positive trainers start talking about what make the dog behavior worse or ruin them completely. I think that's mainly what positive trainers are saying. And I think they're saying it's unnecessary to have to correct the dog. I believe it is unnecessary to correct the dog. If you have to correct the dog, you should always go back to your foundation. Your foundation wasn't strong enough. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the limitation that pet owners put on dog trainers. The time restraints. The fact that you go back every week and they're not doing their homework. And they're like, what the hell is going on? I pretty much need to smack the dog. You know, I, I understand the frustrations that a lot of uh, us trainers go through. And why applying pressure may seem beneficial for the dog. I believe that it's not beneficial for the dog. I don't believe the dog should necessarily be put down, but potentially if those owners are not going to learn how to establish a companionship or a relationship with that dog, they probably should not own a dog. Now, sometimes they may get a high, highly driven dog. Uh, they should have gotten a dog that was uh, more their speed. Something that just laid around all day, that really didn't play, that didn't run around, that did not need exercise and adequate training to uh, keep its mind busy. They should have gotten something else. I believe there should, yeah, not only be more legislation and requirements for dog train the dog training profession. I think the dog training profession definitely needs to be um, put under a fine-tuned microscope, and certain people should not be training. And if you guys think positive trainers should not be training, I highly disagree. Uh, I think everyone should be coming more towards the fact that we have learned a lot in science over the past 50 years. We've learned a lot about psychology and how we learn and learning theory and behavioral sciences. We've learned an absolute extraordinarily, extraordinary amount of information and it should not be ignored. We understand that more punishment equals uh, confusion. We understand this. But I also believe there needs to be more regulation on pet ownership and breeding. I personally think a person who gets a dog should pass a test like a driver's test, like a driving license test. Not only for the simple fact of I feel they should have the basic knowledge of dog behavior and I think they should absolutely know the basic foundations of creating a stable dog. Definitely more regulation on pet ownership, breeding, and the training industry.